is up YouTube Box and Family. Um, it's Kate right here. I'm back at it with another good video for you guys today. Um, yeah, man. Just wanted to uh, talk about some boxing. Um, I had some, uh, you know, some good ideas. And um, I uh, wanted to bring up this uh, secondary topic that I had for my boxing call-out or boxing mandatory call-outs zone. Um, uh, like, I'm probably gonna you know, label them properly, but I'll call it boxing mandatory call out zone. Yeah, something like that. But um yeah, this is a good fight right here. Um between um Floyd Kid Austin Schofield versus Haven Brady Jr. Uh these are two hungry young lions that are in the game right now. Uh for Haven Brady's case, he's a uh he's a super featherweight. Originally he was a featherweight, but I don't think he's ever going back down to featherweight. I think he's getting big and i think um he's better fighting at like 135 but i mean if he does 130 i mean you know that's okay but i think i think 135 is a better weight class for him um same thing with kid austin uh floyd schofield um he's more of a borderline lightweight rather than a super featherweight I just don't see like these guys doing good, you know, when they're trying to cut all that muscle and weight just to make make a weight class that, that isn't feasible for them. Um, so I think Haven, um, he's better fighting at his natural weight, and I think um, it's definitely borderline 135 leading up to 140. Um, that's just how I believe it. Um, I just don't see Haven scaling um, at the lower weight classes. I think he doesn't look. 100% stronger coming into his fights um but as you can see here haven he's a and with four knockouts by way of his eight wins um he's 20 years old he's five foot six with 68 and a half inch arm reach and he's out of albany georgia and he's managed by david mcwater through split team management i think but um yeah haven you know he's good you know he has a lot of skills um, as for Mr. Kid Austin Schofield, um, you know, he's a very good fighter himself. And, uh, you know, he's 11 and 0, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, he's 12 and 0 with, uh, 10 KOs. And he's, uh, 5 foot 7. Don't know the arm reach, but he's just about the same age as Haven, 20. And he's out of Austin, Texas, by way of Jersey City, New Jersey. So. As far as this matchup goes, um, I think both guys will definitely come to fight. Um, I'm definitely looking at who's gonna be like the more sharper fighter in the like you know in their exchange. Um, I think Floyd he's gonna present a lot more problems early game, but I think he's gonna start fading late game when uh, Haven tries to give him, you know, his uh, toughest wars. So. I'm just not too sure of like how either guy will come at towards um, one another, but I think um, Floyd he has the style to beat Haven, but Haven Haven seems to be like the more uh, destructive puncher um, out of other two. Um, I think his his shots are a lot more deadlier when they carry over time, but Floyd's punches um, he needs to have volume punches loaded up with his shots for him to do damage. So, you know, it's a good fight, but I just don't know who to really, like, look at who scales more. Um, I think Floyd has a better footwork over Haven. Um, the other problem that I think I'm going to have to address for Haven is that ha Haven is also, like, 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 every time when he throws a jab, it, like, it seems like he has, like, a good accuracy of where to punch it, but I think it's just, like, the timing of when he throws a jab. He makes he makes up the jab look visible um, enough for somebody to, to catch it on time. And I think that's where Floyd, you know, he's gonna try to take away, you know, those those gifts that get that Haven are, that Haven is good at. But if Haven if he goes out doing what he does best to pressure Floyd and make Floyd think more in a rough house tactical fight, um, I think Haven, you know, he could actually you know he could actually stop Floyd. Um, you know, it's not gonna be easy because Floyd, he's a very, you know, destructive counter puncher. But um, I mean, they're both orthodox guys. I mean, Floyd, you know, says he's um, he's a switch hitter. So um, I think 
you know, that's going to trouble Haven a bit, but once he gets Floyd to a position where he could hurt him, I think Haven's going to just basically take all that switch hitting ability away, and Floyd, he's going to be brought to deep waters. So, I think, um, this fight is definitely like a 50-50 fight. I don't, I don't see either man having any advantages other than like some, some advantages that they're good at is going to carry over other advantages. Um, I think as far as ring IQ, Floyd definitely has like the way better ring IQ. Um, Haven, you know, he, you know, he has good ring IQ, but I think at times he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't stick to, to what the game plan and his whole mantra of what he wanted and wants to do is not uh, going to the direction of where he's supposed to be more, um, he should be more, um, you know, considerate of like where his, uh, um, his punch placement is. So he doesn't get caught with big shots. Um, even in even in his last fight with like the Mexican dude that he fought, uh, you know Eric Eric Mundragon, right? Um, but Mundragon was hurting Haven to the point where Haven was getting backed up, and surprisingly, Haven Haven was able to hurt Mundragon, but his shots didn't look to be a lot more surprising in the event of him hurting Mundragon in in the you know, in the, um, exchange of them fighting, so, you know, it just makes me think that Haven, he has more of, like, a tendency to go blow for blow with you, but he doesn't know how to carry that power into the late game when he's tired, because I think he, he like, you know, he's thinking inside his head, he needs to knock you out if he can't outbox you, and I think that's his utter tendency of him getting clipped more, but if he can, you know, think beyond that and think more about boxing rather than trying to score those big power shots for him to hurt somebody, then I think Haven, he's going to be, you know, the bigger style matchup, you know, disaster for Floyd. Um, I think I think both guys have been not battle tested enough to the point where, you know, we've seen them hurt. So therefore, you know, we have to like see who's going to actually perform better under the pressure while being hurt. And I think Floyd, um, he, you know, he presents a little bit more tenacity with his, um, with his fighting style ability. So I think, um, everything that we see now with Floyd, um, I think he's constantly getting way, way, way better. Um, obviously with like, the competition that both of these guys have been fed so far, um, I say they're right around the same level. And I think, um, both of these guys can definitely put on a show. Um, I don't know as far as like, you know, the promotional dealings would go, but I think, I think this fight can, can easily get made. I don't see why top rank and golden boy can, can get this fight done. It's not like top rank and golden boy have never crossed over before, but it's like for, for a fight of this small magnitude, um, I think, I think it's better to get this fight made now rather than waiting later. And I think um, Floyd and Haven, they'll definitely benefit from one another to to have a good, you know, to have a good, you know, uh, level competitive fight. So um, I want to see these guys fight each other. Um, I think they deserve their their just due as fighters right now. But um, I think now it's time to get these rookies to fight each other. Um, I don't like the whole argument of letting it marinate, you know, until but they're, you know, in their mid you know mid to late version primes i think it's better to get them while they're in their rookie stages and then you know they can rematch each other when they're in their full primes because they're both going to make a crap load of money it shouldn't matter of like who beat who because everyone's going to get beat or they could end up being you know potentially um you know um undisputed or undefeated like uh the record shouldn't matter you know what matters is is like how much how much work you're putting into your division or divisions that you're campaigning at. I think that's what matters in boxing because no matter how many losses you have, you know, those, those losses end up being your greatest, you know, memories as a fighter to be like, oh yeah, you know, even though that I lost to this guy, but I ended up beating like three, four other guys, but then I can come back and beat this guy again or beat him in a potential rematch. And then I came out way better than him. So that's just what shows like the levels of boxing, like, not not every fighter needs to have 
this Floyd Mayweather mantra of believing. Well, no fighter should ever believe that you have to be like Floyd. Because Floyd, the problem with Floyd is that everyone thinks being undefeated and, and having all these accolades behind it means that you're better than everyone else. And that's simply not true. Having the Floyd Mayweather record does not make you better. It does not make you the best man ever. If you if you were the best, then the greatest fighter next, well, the greatest fighter that can go above Floyd Mayweather would be a guy like Marvin Hagler, Thomas Hearns. Like though those guys did not care about what their record was, but they were but they were fighting as if they had you know a world championship fight in front of them every time they fought. So. I look up to those guys more than Floyd because they show to you that their losses actually made them way better and they were still defeating the guys that got gifted decisions up against them because they 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 show into the world that your record does not matter it's it, it like it, it's what your heart and determination matters to come to go to come back and prove something to yourself that you haven't seen before and i think that's what makes a lot of fighters not want to go that route anymore because they're so afraid of of ta tasting defeat because they think like okay i need to be like floyd i need to keep my record protected keep my o protected but it's like you're not going to get the big money back by doing that you have to take deadly risks you can't just say oh well i'm not going to fight this girl or that girl you know as a female fighter but then once I come into like, the world title stage, I'm just going to wait until there's like a vacancy belt on the line. No, like it doesn't work like that. And uh, then on top of that, you know, uh, the women, they actually have to work way harder than, you know, uh, the men to get their shot. But honestly, at the end of the day, the reason why the women are doing more work than uh, the men is because they are left with no choice but to fight, you know, the, be you know, the next available best opposition. So... For all the women that are trying to duck right now against each other, you know they're not helping. They're not helping their careers grow any faster. So I think universally, every fighter needs to fight each other on the same level. You know, women need to fight the same rounds and minutes as men. You know, there shouldn't be any dispute over that. That's what I believe. But still, it's like at the end of the day, like you can't make the excuse to say that these young rookies can't can't go at it. Um, I want to see them fight, and I think this is uh, the best time to, you know, use the technology that we live in now in this uh, technological era to decentralize, you know, like, uh, like you know, about the messages that we bring and uh, make, you know, the sport better. So that's my goal to make a you know, like make a contribution for boxing, and hopefully I can I can be next to all these other guys that are trying to be great. So either way, like I got my own career that I'm focusing on, but. I'm just saying, like, as far as, like, a side, you know, side job, you know, assistance. But either way, um, shout out to both of these kings, man. Uh, they got to fight each other. So shout out to Floyd Schofield. I know you'd be watching, you know, me and, you know, plenty of other people. But shout out to him and his father. And uh, shout out to Haven Brady. And shout out to Bozy Ennis and uh, Jerron Ennis, you know, the crew out in Philadelphia. Uh, um, I hope Haven is uh, getting better with his skills with uh, Bozy. And I think he's going to turn into a very, very destructive fighter in the coming future. So that's very much it, man. Let me know what you guys think about this matchup. And I am out. Salute to the mighty, mighty LDBC and TWT. And I'm out. Peace out. Bye.